Hey everyone, I'm Norn Queen Alexis and welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a look at the Adeptus Sororitas Codex and I'm going to make this a multi-part series because uh, it's Sisters of Battle, they're my personal favorite army, as well as getting a bunch of stuff for the sisters, and I mean a bunch of stuff for them already. I am ready to dive into this codex and talk about each and every single one of these units. So, let's first start with the codex itself. This codex is honestly quite amazing, and the artwork in it is a lot better than the last artwork in the last book, which looked atrocious. It's still the same artist, they just look like they got better. A little bit more custom to the Sisters of Battle. The artwork in this book is absolutely fantastic. This is just gonna be the intro video really quickly going over what's in here. We got the Imperial Creed. We got all six orders represented, which is funny because all of these are on the Triumph of St. Catherine. Um, we got a breakdown of how a order is made, which I actually really like this by the way, but you guys aren't here for that. I know you're not. You're here for me to talk about rules and not lore. I, I hate this, like this, this, that, no. I'm sorry, I like warrior women, but at the same time, I like, I like bad, like you do artwork like this, that's absolutely badass, and then you do artwork like this, come on. And then artwork like this, which is from Dark Heresy, but still. Let's get into some rules really quickly. Also, my favorite canoness, who I wish had rules, GW, please. Give me some rules for this. Please and thank you. So broken down like a regular codex, we have Battleforged rules, then army rules, match play rules, crusade, data sheets, war gear, points, and rules references. So going right over the Battleforged rules, these should be pretty easy for everyone to understand. And actually, I gotta kind of look over because I am hanging my camera over me right now and I can't really see these. So I do apologize if I read things wrong, my, my bad. I have to like lean over everything. So we have Adeptus Sororitas unit, excluding Sanctified and Outcast units. So this is gonna be the only mention of Outcast units. And this is just gonna be um, uh, Ethereal Stern, who's in this codex, by the way, as an HQ choice, and her boy toy. I can't remember his name. I just keep referring to him as boy toy. Sorry, I just do. Uh, Deputy Storage's units excluding uh, Sanctified and Outcast um, units in a Deputy Storage's detachment gain the Order uh, Convocation abilities. Troop units in the Adeptus Sororitas gain the Objective Secured abilities, which I think they still only have one troop choice. And then we have the Order Militants and how they work and everything in here, which a lot of this stuff didn't really change. I'm gonna just be frank with you, it just a lot of it didn't change, it just got better wording. So we go over how you buy and grab all of your objectives. And pretty much if you know how to run any Space Marine Codex, any Codex currently, you know about how you take Warlord traits for a certain order, how you take relics from this certain order, and things of that nature, especially if you saw my Mechanicus review. So let's dive right into the orders. This is what I first want to get into and what I want to base this video about. And then we'll do a deeper dive into this book as we go. So Order of a Martyred Lady is the order that I love. I absolutely love it. Order of a Martyred Lady is the one featured on all the box art um, for the most part. I think there is, no, it's on all the box art. Um, it is my favorite order. It's the order that I fell in love with right after reading like Hammer and Anvil, uh, Red and Black, um, just so many. Mark of Faith, Celestine, Our Martyred Lady, um, Ethereal Stern, the new Ethereal Stern book, which is also titled Ethereal Stern, which is weird. Oh wait, the first one's Demonifuge. Sorry, my bad. Anyway, diving into this. Order of a Martyred Lady. At the end of any phase other than a morale phase in which any order, any unit with this convoca convocation were destroyed, you gain one miracle dice. This is in addition to any miracle dice that you would gain at the end of the phase in which a character unit with this convocation was destroyed. 
Now, interesting thing about this, Repentia units uh, used to get you two if they died with Martyred Lady. Each time an attack is made by a model with this convocation, uh, if its unit is below starting strength, which is cool because now if you resurrect and go back up to full, you're no longer gaining the bonuses, um, add one to the attacker's hit rolls. So your three plus ballistic steel becomes two plus, which makes them really good for retributors, uh, your basic battle sisters, dominions, and other shooting units. It doesn't really help too good with this, but it also helps with your melee units as well. Like your Repentia, instead of hitting on fours, will be hitting on threes. Um, so it is something that makes your close combat capability even scarier than most armies. For instance, your, again, Repentia, your Seraphim will be hitting on twos, your Seraphim will be hitting on twos, your Sacristans will be hitting on twos. There's a lot of melee power in Martyred Lady, and it's why it's one of my favorites. So, Honor the Martyred is their special stratagem. It's an epic deed stratagem. Use the stratagem at the end of a phase in which an order of our Martyred Lady character uh, model from your army was destroyed by an enemy unit, excluding a model that was destroyed, subsequently returned to the battlefield at the end of the phase due to any rules, uh, example being Divine Intervention Stratagem. Until the end of the battle, each time an order of our Martyred Lady unit, a Martyred Lady model makes an attack against an enemy unit, add one to the attacker's wound rolls. So now you're adding one to the wound rolls as well. So if you just sacrifice a Palantine or a, uh, like a Palantine or a Darmada, and they just happen to die, you spend one CP and you get plus one to wound. So your bolters on average will go from wounding on fours to wounding on threes which is going to be insane because you'll have melt guns that wound things at all the way up to toughness uh, seven on twos. So Martyred Lady is definitely really, really, really powerful with this. They have their special Warlord trait, which each time an attack is allocated to this Warlord, subtract one from the damage characteristic of that attack to a minimum of one that turns heavy bolters from damage two to damage one. Pretty decent. Each time you gain a Miracle Dice, at the end of, of a phase as a res... God, I can, I can read. Uh, each time you gain a Miracle Dice, at the end of a phase as a result of Vengeance, if the Warlord destroys an enemy unit during that phase, that Miracle Dice is automatically a 6. Now, this can be extremely nasty because you have two ways of getting automatic 6s with Martyred Lady. So that means you're going to be overwatching with those sixes. That means you're going to be guaranteeing those damage rolls with sixes. And it's going to be honestly terrifying. And I don't think they explain Miracle Dice just yet. No, not yet. So we got to read how that works. So I'll probably get to that in this video as well. So moving on, we have the Relic uh, Martyr's Vengeance which is a pistol, it's strength, um, replaces an Inferno pistol, which is kind of cool. It turns into a 12 inch range, pistol one, strength nine, AP minus four, D6 plus three damage weapon. This pistol is kind of worth taking. Like, I like the pistol. I typically don't buy too many relics because I'm too busy trying to get the double attacks and all of the other crazy things with my sisters of battle. But taking multiple relics, especially on characters that can just grab a Inferno pistol, is pretty decent. Like if you have a, a spare cannon S or, um, honestly, what other characters can take an Inferno pistol? It's just a cannon S. That's the only one I can think of right off the top of my head. So I apologize. So moving on, we have Valorous Heart. Now the big three that always were the top three sister of battle armies, in my opinion, the first one was Bloody Rose, the second one was Evan Chalice, and the third one was Martyred Lady. I think all of them are great. Um, or was it this one? I know Martyred Lady was the one that was the weaker ones compared to the other ones, but all of them are good. Let's just put this out there. Every single one of these is good. There is gonna be no bad ones that we talk about. 
So, Valorous Heart, each time a model with this conviction would lose a wound as a result of a mortal wound, roll a d6, 5 plus feel no pain against it. Uh, each time an attack is allocated to a model with this conviction, if the attack uh, has an armor penetration characteristic of 1 or minus 2, the armor penetration characteristic is reduced by 1. Now, this used to be the one that you always went to for the AP minus 2 does nothing, but now, and I want to point this out before we go, Let's go over to the Amaga Fire because this was the strategy. Where the hell are you? You crazy banshee? I, I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. That's a thrust turn. There's only one troop choice. These are characters. Uh, wait, isn't that the Amaga Fire? Yeah, there it is. The Amaga Fire. Uh, tell the faithful when a friendly order unit, order core unit is within six inches of this model, you can reroll the advance and charge rolls for that unit. Uh, stoic, uh, when a friendly order core unit is within six inches, notice that it doesn't say infantry because um, the, where is it? The Palantines or the Paragon war suits are actually vehicles, but they have the order keyword and they are core. So they got rid of effects affecting vehicles. Not affecting vehicles. They got rid of the infantry ones. So you gotta be careful of those infantry keywords because of what can and can't affect your Paragon War suits. But before my brain decides to go into another tangent, uh, subtract one from the model from the attacker's wound roll. So if it's strength three, if a strength three weapon shoots at her, uh, you reduce the wound roll to a four. And then the last one is the plus one strength, and that's it. So this order right now, just based off of this, is kind of weak, in my opinion. It just reduces it by one. Not really something I'm after, in my opinion. Somebody out there, if you think that this is good, please let me know. But the rest of it might make up for it, okay? Okay. Um, so we got a stratagem, one CP, use the stratagem in your shooting phase when an order of the Valorous Heart unit from your army is selected to shoot, or in the fight phase when an order of the Valorous Heart unit from your army is selected to fight. Until the end of the fight phase, until the end of that phase, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, you can ignore any and all uh, hit rolls, ballistic skill, and weapon skill modifiers. So if they're always hitting on threes or fours, they're always going to hit on that. Uh, again, personally, I think this is a, just a bit weak, considering Martyred Lady, if you lose one model, you get plus one, which would negate that anyway. So I'm not really seeing too much impressive from Valorous Heart yet. But again, there might be strategies out there, and if you know them, comment in the comment section down below. Next, we have your Warlord Traits. Each time, um, which is impervious to pain, I actually really like this one. Each time this warlord performs an act of faith, it regains one lost wound. That's really good, considering you use one every turn. So you regain every, a point every turn. Uh, each, time a, each time this warlord would lose a wound, roll a d6 on a five plus, the wound is not lost. I think this is extremely good. This is what makes up for Valorous Heart, and you want a close combat cannoness to go in. And then you got the Relic, the Casket of Peanuts. Um, I know it says something different, but that's what I read it as. Um, Valorous Heart models only. The bearer has the following ability, Casket of Peanuts, Aura. Uh, while the enemy unit is within three inches of the bearer, subtract one from its toughness characteristic of that model in that enemy unit. Um, if it is chaos, subtract one from the strength characteristic as well. Hey, Death Guard, we do that thing that you do. Just not as good. Overall, I gotta say Martyred Lady is looking better than Valor's Heart. But again, there might be something that I'm missing for Valor's Heart. I just don't think it's that good right now. Next, we have Bloody Rose, and they have Quick to Anger. Bloody Rose being one of the best from last edition, and honestly, still one of the best in my opinion. Like, if I didn't have everything painted up as Martyred Lady, I would be running Bloody Rose because it is my playstyle a bit more. So, each time a unit with this conviction fights, if 
it made a charge move, was charged, or performed a heroic intervention this turn, then a unit, then until that fight is resolved, add one to the attacker's characteristics of models in that unit. So we gain the Space Marine ability, which is better because one, we're cuter, two, we're hotter, three, we're goth chicks, which makes everything better, four, we're cheaper than your Space Marines and just better in every way. Those are jokes. That that's a joke. Don't don't get hurt. Anyway, each time a model in, with this conviction makes a melee attack, if it if that model made a charge move, was charged, performed a heroic intervention this turn, improve the armor penetration characteristic of that attack by one. That's just flat. So your eviscerators, AP minus three, AP minus four. Your power swords, AP minus four. Your halberds and uh, maces are going up like crazy. You get the permanent ability of freaking Assault Doctrine just as a universal rule across the army. This is absolutely 100% amazing. Oh yeah, and before we continue, I do have to tell you guys that this is sponsored content. Games Workshop did actually send me these books. I have to make that clear. I am sponsored by Games Workshop. Anyway, you change in advertising things, I have to state it. I remembered because I looked over at my notes on the side. So tear them down. One CP. Use the stratagem in the fight phase when an order of our bloody order of the bloody roads unit from your armies is selected to fight. Until the end of that phase, each time a model in that unit makes a melee attack, an unmodified hit roll of a six automatically wounds the target. That is amazing because that gets past your freaking. Um, you don't have to use a miracle dice. But you can use your six miracle dice, like your six that you rolled earlier in the game, miracle dice, to guarantee a wound. That's phenomenal. Like, 100% amazing ability right there. So, Martyred Blade, uh, Bloody Rose, best so far. Uh, Warlord, Bra Blazing Ira. Add one to the attack characteristics of this warlord. This warlord is eligible to charge in a turn in which they advanced. So your, your cannoness is going to go and rip something apart. Now, a funny thing is you can get a weapon that gives you plus three attacks if you grab the chainsword, the super chainsword. You can have a bloody rose cannoness with like eight attacks. And this is very simple. And you can add one to their attacks and add one to their armor penetration and just make them insane. You can also add one attack with the Amagifier, getting your Cannon S up to almost nine attacks, if not 10, if you take the Triumph of St. Catherine, which I believe still has that ability, but we will have to check. So right now, Bloody Rose Cannon S's are blenders. They are absolutely incredible. Relic, beneficent, you know what, my accent ruined that. We're just going to move on. Uh, models equipped with a uh, chainsword only. This relic replaces the chainsword with the following profile. It's an eviscerator, essentially. It's plus two to your strength, which makes it strength three up to five. But then you have your bloody rose thing. You go up to six. And yeah, okay. So it makes three additional attacks with this weapon. There it is. That's the, the weapon I was looking for. If there are six or more enemy models within three inches of the bearer when selected to fight, make D3 plus three additional attacks with this weapon instead. So let's get this straight. That's six plus four base gives you 10 plus one for charging plus one for a magnifier. Uh, if, the Cath if the Triumph of St. Catherine adds one attack or the Preacher adds one attack to you, you're looking at about 13 attacks. With a cannon S, with an AP minus three chainsword at strength six, because you're going to be bumping up your strength somehow. I think we said the Amagifier can do that. Um, add one to the strength. Yep, the Amagifier can do that. I just wanted to make sure of that. And let me just make sure that I'm correct on the Triumph of St. Catherine, because I would hate to tell you all of this and then just be completely wrong. And let me read the missionary while we're at it. Uh, they have war hymns now, so we'll have to read war hymns, unfortunately, to get that. But the Triumph of St. Catherine is right here. 
So, oh geez. Um, add one to the attack rolls made. Oh, it just adds one. I always get this wrong because I'm so used to the original one. So that is my bad. Okay, so moving on from Bloody Rose, which I rate as a 10 out of 10, it's, it's perfect in every way. This is the order to run, like right now. My favorite order, Martyred Lady, amazing. I absolutely love it. A lot of synergy, a lot of shooting. This is the army that you wanna do a lot of shooting with and take an odd number of squads with, like Retributors with more than five bodies so you can take away a wound and still be fully efficient at your shooting. But Bloody Rose is the way that sisters want to be played, just running in and chopping things up, especially if you have Paragon War Suits, especially if you have the Sacristans, because they're gonna be getting a ton of attacks, especially if you have Preachers, especially if you have Repentia, Xerophon, you're gonna be taking multiple detachments to get all of this stuff. Evan Chalice, this is the other one that everyone thought was the best, so I'm hoping that it stays up there. And honestly, it was one of the best. I was just really salty because mine weren't the best. And I will, and I am proud enough to admit that. Martyred Lady is the coolest in my opinion, but obviously these two were just better than Martyred Lady. It's just they got a soft place in my heart. So forgive me. So the first thing that we get is Daughters of the Emperor because Evan Chalice is the ones that were daughters of the first uh, and the saint that killed uh, uh, Valdar. Oh my god, I am blanking on sister lore and it's bugging the ever living hell out of me. But anyway, moving on. It's late at night, it's two in the morning right now, so let's get to this. If, an, if any unit in your army have this convocation, uh, when you determine when which sacred rites, page 93, are active for your army, after you have determined your mission, you cannot uh, you cannot randomly select two sacred rites. Instead, after you have selected one sacred rite, you must then select a second. Both of these sacred rites are active for that unit for from your army with. This convocation, oh my god, that's really good. You just get to select those. Okay, I'm liking that. Each time a model it, uh, each time a model or a unit with this convocation performs an act of faith, you can first discard one miracle dice, and if you do so, one miracle dice you use in that act of faith is considered to be a six. Okay, so they kept that, and that's that's still amazing. Both those abilities are still crazy good. We'll have to read what the sacred rites are. And they did say on page 91, I believe. 93. So let's go ahead and check those. Actually, we should check those out later. Warlord trait. Cleansing flame. Use a stratagem in your shooting phase. When an order of a order of the Ebon Chalice unit from your army is selected to shoot until the end phase. Add four inches to the range of all flamers. So you go from 12 to 16 inches with flamethrowers, which is really good. Um, each time a model in that unit would make an attack with a flamer weapon, an unmodified wound roll of a four plus, the target suffers one mortal wound in addition to any normal damage to a maximum of three mortal wounds inflicted, uh, inflicted per phase via this stratagem. Uh, eh. I'm trying to think if people are still running heavy flamethrowers over multi-meltas. Multi-meltas and heavy bolters are just better than heavy flamethrowers. Heavy flamethrowers are 12 inches, 16 inches with this, because uh, it only adds four, which is weird. If it added like uh, six to be 18 inches, I'd be like, then it's really good. But honestly, I'm... Um, I'm not very impressed. It's three mortal wounds with flamethrowers, which is cool. Uh, to get four ups on flamethrowers, you're gonna have to hit at least, you're gonna have to roll d6, you're gonna have to hit at least three times, then get three four ups. You're gonna have to do it with multiple flamethrowers in the unit. Overall, this, this stratagem is kind of garbage. Um, I might be wrong. Maybe a Retributor squad of all heavy flamethrowers, but then you don't have your multi melters. So you're not getting the 36 inch multi melt blasts. Um, if they still have that, 
So there is still that. But overall, I'm not impressed by this stratagem. Moving on, we have uh, Terrible Knowledge. Uh, if your warlord is on the battlefield, the miracle dice you gain at the start of the battle round is automatically a six. Holy crap, the rest of their abilities definitely make up for this. Um, while your warlord is on the battlefield, each time you spend a command point to use a stratagem, you can roll 1d6 on a 5 plus that command point is refunded. That's a warlord trait. That's insane. That's ridiculously good. Okay. Sure. What does your relic do? Uh, model equipped with a Condemner bolt gun only. This relic replaces the bolt gun and has the following uh, thing. Blessed Strike, AP minus two. Abilities is targets a Psyker probably. Yeah, it's a anti-psychic weapon. Um, overall, you don't care about these at all. It's, it's these two. Um, Evan Chalice doesn't have a good, war good, uh, command point ability, whatever. Doesn't have a good relic. Who cares? This is amazing. Like, this is solid. Um, honestly, Evan Chalice looks to be really good as well. I'm not sure if it's as good as Bloody Rose. Bloody Rose deals more damage. This one deals more synergy. So, again, I think this one might be the shooting one. A uh, bit over Bloody Rose. A bit over Martyred Lady. I mean, Martyred Lady is starting to fall behind. No, be good, Martyred Lady. And so then we have Argon Shroud. Argon Shroud has as a uh, deeds, not words. Uh, each time a model with this conviction, conviction makes a normal move or advance in your movement phase that uh, until the end of your shooting phase, it counts as having remained stationary. We went over the FAQ for remaining stationary. Each time a unit with this conviction is selected to shoot or fight in the... Shoot or fight, you can reroll one hit roll and one wound roll, one wound roll for resolving that attack. That's ridiculously good as well. So we're just seeing really good abilities for these sisters. Sorry, I had to walk away to grab a drink really quickly. Okay, so getting back to it. So that one's really good if you want to run without support, like a Palantine, a Cannon S nearby, and you want to run Retributors. Um, that's how I see this being rolled. Or you just put like a multi melta in a five woman squad and you just keep using it on the multi melta. I think that's really good. Uh, use the stratagem in any phase in which order of our order of the Argon Shroud model from your army would lose a wound as a result of a mortal wound until the end of that phase. Each time that model or any model uh, in the unit would lose a wound as a result of a mortal wound, roll d6 on a four plus. It's not lost. Now, the cool thing is, it's not a psychic power one. So if you're fighting Dukari and they're just mass spamming you with mortal wounds, this is a solid counter to that. Okay. Selfless heroism. Uh, this warlord is enabled to perform a heroic intervention if it is within six inches, horizontal and vertical of five inches. Um, oh, that's actually really good. Each time your warlord makes a heroic intervention, it can move up to six inches. All of the rules for her convention still apply. At the start of your fight phase, if your warlord is within engagement range of an enemy unit, it can fight first in that phase. Uh, overall, that's pretty okay, not great. It's kind of decent. Quicksilver Veil. Vale. Uh, quick little lore note. Quicksilver. Get it quick. Quicksilver is actually an anti-psychic, anti-demon uh, piece of cloth, essentially, or it's interwoven mesh fibers. It actually acts as armor and is super useful for denying the witch as well as denying demons from be even being in reality. Um, Rosalina actually uses Quicksilver in all of her clothing. So interesting little side note about my Inquisitor. Add three inches to the bearer's movement characteristic. That's okay. Uh, I'd probably put this on a banner. Uh, each time an attack is made against the bearer, subtract one from the attacker's hit rolls. Yeah, I'd definitely put this on a banner. Like, I would put this on somebody that needs to survive, that has an AoE, that's really good for the army. Uh, possibly a Preacher, not a Preacher, uh, possibly um, the Magifier herself, 
to try to survive a little bit better. Then we got Order of the Sacred Rose. Uh, this one's okay. It's not great compared to the other ones. I think it's good. It's just, it's not great. Uh, it doesn't have like really good melee. It doesn't have, it has okay survivability. The best thing it has is the four up ignored mortal wounds, which I think is really good. And the remaining stationary is really cool, but overall I think the others do shooting a bit better. And Retributors ignore the moving penalties anyway, so this would only really be good with your tanks. So if you want to do a tank line, this is actually pretty decent. Uh, but overall, I'm not too impressed with Argon Shroud. It's good, but just not as good as Bloody Rose or Evan Chalice. So, and that was Evan Chalice, right? It was the one right across from me. I just want to make sure I get that correct. Yeah, Evan Chalice. Order of the Sacred Rose. Each time a combat attrition test is taken for units, it's automatically passed. Uh, each time you use a miracle dice, when a model or a unit with this conviction performs an act of faith, uh, roll 1d6. On a 4 plus, you gain one miracle dice. Well, that's pretty handy. Just use it and regain it. All right, so they have the Emperor's Judgment, one strat one command point. Use the stratagem in your shooting phase. Uh, Sacred Rose unit from your army is selected to shoot until the end of that, until the end of that phase. Each time an attack is made with a ranged weapon by a model in that unit, unmodified hit rolls of six scores, one additional hit. Again, really good with Retributors, really good with Battle Sisters, um, really good with Dominions as well, but. Actually, there is no buts. That's just good. Okay? I think the other orders do it just as well, but this one is kind of really cool for getting that double hit. Um, so especially if you're spamming multi melters That's just really good. And heavy bolters. Ooh, that could be nasty with heavy bolters. Warlord trade. The light of the divine. Once per turn, when your warlord performs an act of faith, um... One Miracle Dice use in that Act of Faith is considered to be a six. Ooh. This Warlord has the following ability. Light of the Divine uh, Aura ability. Uh, friendly six inch Sacred Rose core unit within six inches of the Warlord. If it is core unit has fallen back, it's still eligible to shoot. Wow, that is a lot of words to say that if you're within six inches of the Warlord and your core, you get to fall back and shoot. Overall, not great, not bad. Okay. And then we go on to the minor order so you can create your own. Now this, I just want you to pause, take a look at all of this and create your own. Honestly, a lot of these are super good. So make sure you, you take a look. And that is it for the first part of the orders themselves. I think the winners here are obviously Evan Chalice and Bloody Rose. I don't know which one I like a bit more. I think Evan Chalice might be a bit better, depending on what the Sacred Rites actually do. But Bloody Rose is solid. At third place, I, I want to put Martyred Lady, but it's just not sitting with me that well. I think... Um, I think the one of remaining stationary at all times is a bit better, but Blood... Martyred Lady is just, it's a lot of fun. And it farms command, uh, farms Miracle Dice really quickly. So that is going to be it for the first part of this. And in the next video, we'll go over their stratagems. So thank you for joining me for this uh, quick video that is 30 minutes long. You know, this was supposed to be a five minute video, by the way. And I went on giant tirades. So stay tuned for the next one where we go over the stratagems. As always, thank you for joining. If you really like this content, please check out my Patreon. Please and thank you. As always, Nord Queen Alexis. Love you guys. Bye.